Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool arcade game repair video for you today. What do you think about this one? We are working on an Atari football cocktail table arcade game. Wow, what a blast from the past, people. We had a gentleman ask us if we could fix his Atari football, and we said, why, yes, we believe we can. And so he brought it to us, and here it is, and we're going to fix it. And guess what? We're going to film it, and you're going to watch it, and you're going to love it, because we're going to fix it. So it's going to happen, people. I can feel it already. Now think about what I'm saying here, okay? This thing isn't even plugged in. It's in broke condition, and I'm already telling you from the very beginning that we're going to fix it. That's one of our secrets, people. Unbelievable optimism. So this is a two-player version. I believe there may be a four-player version. Am I right about that? Wasn't there one with, with two trackballs on each side? Um, and this one has a, uh, like a, the LED boards here and all of that. It's got new overlays, it looks like, or at some point new overlays. If you look close, see how they're cracked on the edges? That's fairly common. Once you put a new overlay on one, they always crack at the edge. Not just these, just about any arcade game. It's a real issue that we've been running into for years. Uh, this side looks good, too. It looks lighter. That's just the camera because we're right here in the window with the sun shining in on it. But it looks the same as the other side. Pretty clean. Not perfect, but clean. Look what it's right here next to. Some other time, people. That's not for this video. And uh, there is a little trap door down there that has been removed, and you can see in the guts. So up here on the top, it has the cool green overlay because it's football, people. Got to look like grass, right? And it's got the little cardboard surround. And it looks to me like this is a game that uh, has been fixed up a little bit cosmetically. Probably worked pretty good at one point. And uh, now, from what I understand, it's not doing much. So I need, to, uh, I need to work through it. Now, the way we fix things... Now, let me, let me tell you a little secret. I have never fixed an Atari football arcade game. I've never even worked on an Atari football arcade game. But I've fixed an Atari basketball arcade game. And I've, and I've, I've fixed an Atari breakout arcade game and a super breakout and a missile command and about 50 centipedes and... A whole bunch of uh, 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 asteroids and, you know. So, as a matter of fact, we just recently fixed an Atari Pong arcade game. So if I can fix a Pong, I can fix a football, right? So the, uh, Now, how, how do we fix things that, we have, that we've never worked on before? You start at the beginning. That's the secret. I'm telling you the secret, okay? The good thing about Atari stuff is that they have really good manuals. Man, this thing is legit. Look at this. It even has a cigarette burn on it. Legit. The good thing about an Atari is the manuals were, were awesome. Oh, I fixed the stunt cycle. That was probably the best manual I ever read. Um, in the manuals, they show everything. How everything goes together, how it all works, the power voltages, all of that. So what the way you fix it is you start at the very beginning... And the beginning is the cord coming in off the wall. The power going to it, going into the power supply. You check all that. You make sure that the power supply is in good shape and doing its thing. Once you get all those voltages right, then you move on to the next thing and the next thing. And you just work your way through it, you know. So we'll be doing that. If you get to the board and it's still not working right, well, then you have to work on the, uh, on the board. And you, you start on the schematics at the beginning and see if the clock signals are working and then... Uh, see if the CPU is resetting properly, and then see if it looks like the RAM are working, and then, you know, you just work through it systematically. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the power supply is working as it should. But um, I'm going to spin it around here so we can get a good gander at the inside and see what the inside of this thing looks like. Um, just for, you know, posterity's sake. Who knows how many videos of Atari football repairs 
uh, will make their way onto YouTube. So I'll spin it around and let's look inside of it. So there is the door that pops off of it. Down here in the bottom, we have a power supply chassis. This is, you know, this predates all of the stuff like the Centipede uh, games and the Asteroids games that had the, uh, the suitcase down in the bottom and the AR2 power supplies. So this is, you've got a little chassis down at the bottom and it's sending uh, voltages directly over to this PCB. Um, and then, of course, you've got the monitor mounted up in there. This is the monitor chassis over here. So it all looks very scary, but like I mentioned, start at the beginning. So we're going to, uh, looks like we've got a good power cord that we're starting with, or good enough. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to unplug the monitor and unplug the game board. And uh, we're going to check voltages on the power supply first. If you look, this is what they call the big blue. It's in the bottom of most Atari games. This is a big capacitor, and they start causing all kinds of problems after a while. This game is so old, and that's the original one. I would bet that that's probably going to be one of our problems right there. So... Uh, Maybe I'll, uh, yeah, let me see if I can figure out a way to test it so I can show you on video how you can test a big blue. Basically, you're looking for AC ripple on the DC voltages, but this one may not even have DC. I need to look in the manual, I guess. We'll look in the manual and see what our voltages are supposed to be. Um, but, you know, I guess we could plug it up just so we get a video of what it's doing at the beginning just so I can prove that we fixed it. Maybe that'd be smart. I don't usually like to plug them up uh, in unknown condition because if the voltages are too high, you might burn up the board or whatever. But I know for a fact it's been plugged in several times um, by the by the owner. So I guess I'll plug it up just so we can see what it's doing uh, as we start, and then we'll start messing with the power supply first. Okay, so we've got it plugged in. Nothing yet because of the interlock switch. There was a little switch on a lot of these games that the door, whenever the door is on, holds the switch in, which holds the power on. So if you take the door off, the switch pops out, and uh, you don't get any voltage. But what it took me years to figure out is if you pull the switch, it stays out. They call that the interlock switch. So I heard the monitor do something. We got some lights on our things here. Alright, yeah, so we got like a screwed up image on the screen. So that's what we're starting with. I don't want to leave that on too long, but there you go. Okay, I want to show you the amazing Atari manuals, the way they used to do them. This is an Atari football manual. It's online. Anybody can go get it. Um, so I'm looking through, I'm going to look at the power supply, but I just, to, just to check, I went and started reading some of what they are calling the theory of operation. So look how it describes the sink generator. Okay, so this is, this is how you can fix these. Look at this. The base frequency of the sink generator is a 12 megahertz clock uh, generated by a crystal-controlled oscillator consisting of crystal Y1, inverter N4, and several discrete components. The output of this oscillator is 12 megahertz. Examin examination of this signal with an oscilloscope at pin 2 of N4 should, not, should show the period or cycle time to be approximately 83 nanoseconds. The base frequency is then divided down by binary counters P5, P6, and N6. It provides the various horizontal synchronization frequencies 1H through 256H. The final output of this horizontal counter chain is 256H at pin 13 of N6. This signal is, in effect, a division of the base frequency, 12 megahertz by 768, to give a horizontal line frequency of 15,750 hertz. The period of 256H is about 63.5 microseconds. The 256H signal, as well as another horizontal signals, as other horizontal signals, are used to generate the H blank and H sync timing pulses at flip-flop N5. See Figure 311's horizontal sync timing diagram for the relative timing of these waveforms. And I mean, they just go through and they describe pin by pin how everything works. It's amazing. I've never seen anything like it. I had a, a stunt cycle that we fixed that was like this too. 
Um, their, their later manuals are very good too, but these early ones are just amazing just because it literally tells you what each pin does in a lot of cases. So uh, we're going to look at the power supply section and uh, check that out first. Okay, folks, so we're going to check some voltages. All right, so I printed out from those wonderful uh, schematics how the power supply works. And so the, pl the power plug comes in here, and it's the very beginning. Uh, it runs through a couple switches. There's an on-off switch underneath the control panel on the other side. And then there's the interlock switch here that we talked about. All right. Then the wires go through a couple fuses and they go into this line filter. Those are hardly ever a problem. And then it comes up here and it goes through the voltage selection block. Right? So if you look, see all those different little pigtails? I'll show you this here in a minute because I'm sure we're going to end up with this power supply out of here, but there's all those little different pigtails that can plug in. Depending on which one they plug in, it changes the voltage coming in from the wall. So you would plug in a different one depending on if you were in Europe or Japan or Charlotte, North Carolina. I guess we're in Rock Hill today. but <laughs> So uh, the orange one is, should be plugged in for the USA, and it is. But you got to check that kind of stuff, right? Okay. So then the power, the you know, the wall voltage runs into this big transformer, which is that big black thing on the power supply. And then it has different windings. So basically you have power run in a couple places, or I guess one place depending on what's jumpered. And then it runs out on the other side as different voltages. So the transformer creates three voltages, 25 volts AC center tapped, which means the ground is in the middle, and you can divide it in half, I guess. And then a 16 and a half volts AC center tapped. And then uh, a 6.3 volts AC, but it's not center tapped. So the 6.3 volts AC is probably for like light bulbs and stuff. Okay. The 16.5 volts AC, if you look, the two red lines run up here to this little PCB that must be underneath the, uh, uh, the uh, power supply with two diodes on it, right? And it basically rectifies the voltage from AC to DC. And so there's a couple of fuses, and then it also has this big, huge capacitor that we're talking about, the big blue, right? So the way that you can tell if the big blue is any good is the whole purpose of it is to smooth out the voltage um, and to, to take out basically the AC ripple in the voltage. So if you check at the end after the capacitor, uh, if you still have AC on the lines, if it's not DC, then this capacitor screwed up, right? So that's what we're going to check. So we're going to check all these voltages and see if they're there. So the two blue ones are 6.3 volts AC, which isn't even really all that important because it's uh, it's essentially the light bulbs. Uh, but let me see if I can let me see if I can do it to it. Bum, 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 bum. It has 6.86 volts on the two blue lines, right? It's supposed to be 6.3. So you might think, oh, well, that's messed up. It's 6.8. There's our problem, right? No, because it's, it's unregulated, which means it's like a runaway train. Nothing has regulated it back yet. So it's a little high, which is better than it being a little low, really. I don't know if the regulator would raise it afterwards, but I, I guess uh, this will never get uh, regulated because it's just running over to the light bulb. So, you know, it's close, 6.8. They're all in regulated voltage, so none of them will be dead on the money. So then you have these two red ones at pins 8 and 9 that if you look, connect over here and then connect to the red ones coming off of the transformer, right? So that should be 16 and a half volts AC center tapped. So we're going to check between those two and see what we get. So I've turned the game back off. Oh, I forgot to mention, I unplugged the monitor and I unplugged the game board. Because if these voltages are screwed up, we don't want, uh, we don't want none of that. Let me see, 10, 9, 8, 7. Okay, so those two red ones aren't even populated on this, so they didn't need them. So we're going to move up to the orange. 
uh, the gray and the orange. The two oranges connect directly over to the 25 volt AC center tap. So these two, that voltage runs over to the power supply and gets turned into the audio voltage that runs the audio amp. So I'm turning the game off and back on each time. So we get 27.44 volts here. So the center tap is this middle line here. So if you connect, if you'd measured between the center tap and the outside, you would get half. So instead of 27, you would get something like 13.7 between these two or between those two. So it's a way of making a separate voltage. Like if you needed a 12 volt somewhere, you could just grab that. All right, so that's that one. And then the one that we're concerned with is this top one. So this is supposed to make 10 volts DC after it runs through these two diodes, right? So red and black and red and green. I see it up there. I see what they're doing. But it's a DC voltage. So we want to see if we get our 10 volts DC or what we get. I got something wrong. So we're getting negative 12, which would be 12 if I had the leads reversed. 1283, okay? So now what we're going to do is on that same line, we're going to check for AC. Ah, we got nothing, which is good. Unless I'm checking it wrong, which I may be. Uh... I don't think I'm good. Yeah, I'm checking across the terminals of the thing. Okay, so the big blue is actually fine. But I'm going to replace it anyway <laughs> because even though our test isn't telling us that it's wrong, the thing's really old and it's leaking. I can see juice coming out of it, so that doesn't look good. But it does. Oh, there we go. That's more like it. I figured something was going on. Okay, so see how we're up at over half a volt AC on that line? I must have not had a good connection on the, uh, on the probes. See how we're up at like half a volt AC? Anything over like 0.4 or something like that, you're letting too much AC through on your, on your DC. So the whole theory is, is that once it sends the DC voltage to the board where it's, it's regulated to 5 volts to run all the chips, it has AC on it that hasn't been removed. So it makes the chips not know what the hell to do like the, the power supply is not clean and so it makes it do all kinds of crazy stuff so if you get a game an atari game especially that's resetting or it, it won't boot up it'll come up with crazy stuff on the screen nothing's working right lights come on and go off noises happen and go off a lot of times it's the big blue capacitor in the bottom it's letting ac through all the on the dc voltages in the power supply and causing you all kinds of trouble so I'm going to pull this power supply out so we can get a little better look at it on the bench. This is what we're starting with. Not really all that much to it. So the AC comes in over here. Runs out this plug through to the switches, runs through a couple fuses, runs through the line filter, over to here, runs through the voltage selector, runs up into the transformer and back down, runs through this little rectifier board that just has two diodes on it, connects to the big blue capacitor, right? And then once all that's done, runs through some more fuses and runs out the plug. And so all of that's detailed on the schematics, so that's what we're messing with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up the top a little bit, and then we're going to change out that big capacitor. So as you can see, that cap is actually leaking. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's acid or something. Yeah. 
Okay, so here's the old one, which was a 26,000. No, 27,000. I'm sorry, the schematic said 26,000. 27,000, 15 volt. And it was... That's 7819, I think, is the date code. So it would have been the 19th week of 78 is when it was made. And it's leaking, but I don't know if that's from inside. It could just be that something dripped on the top of it and then slid down that jacket and has been kind of hanging out in there for a long time for me to open that up. But whenever we were messing with it before, you could feel it on the top of it too. So that could be its juice. And so we got these new ones. We got these from our buddies at Great Ed at Great Plains Electronics. He has some really cool arcade and pinball stuff, and he, he remakes these. So um, we keep these in. I don't know what this date code here translates to. Hopefully it's not the 17th week of 85. <laughs> I don't believe it is. I believe they're two or three years old. Uh, and whenever you put it in, you have to be careful which side is plus and which side is negative. So uh, I put them in. Sometimes you have to replace these two rectifier diodes on here. Um, I think 6A4s will replace that. But uh, if you don't have any problems, you don't have to replace them. So I left them. So we'll see if we have problems. Maybe I'll end up taking them back out. I also checked all five fuses, and they were the correct ones. And they were in the right place, and they looked like original. So this thing looks like it's never even had a fuse blown. So who knows? But... Um, we got our new capacitor on there, cleaned it up a little bit. You can kind of clean it up however you see fit. Here's a better look at the voltage selection plugs. The orange one is the American one. So we're ready to pop it back in and uh, we're going to test the voltages. And then for just for giggles, I'm going to check the AC voltage once this new one's in there and see if it's better. Remember before we were up over 0.5 of an AC volt on the 10 volt line. So we'll see... Uh, We'll see if this one's any better or if it was off or not. Same setup, but we've got the new capacitor in it. Let's see if what we get this time. So we're getting 12.89. We were getting 12.83 before. It's grown a little bit because of that new capacitor. Now let's see if we got anything on the AC. Nothing, but we were getting that for a minute before too, right? I don't know if you should have nothing. Surely there should be something. Hmm. I thought I'd go to 0 0.5 there for a minute. So I've got it pulled out slightly. And it does that. Hmm. I don't know, folks. I think our 0.5 reading... Oh, yeah. See, look. I'm getting that with one probe completely out. So I think our reading before was nonsense. But the thing was leaking, I swapped it. Hey, what can you say? All right, so now that we know that the voltages are within spec, they were before too, I'm gonna to go ahead and plug the board back in and I'm gonna plug the monitor in and see if it looks any different. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. What do you think? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Power supply, people. Always check the power supply. We met this guy one time. He was this old hippie that worked on arcade games, and he had all kinds of stuff in his garage. And uh, we went, and we were buying something off of him. And uh, we were just shooting it about fixing games. And he was real old school and everything he had. He had, like, prototype Williams stuff and things like that. And... Uh, he had all this old school stuff, and he said uh, several times, he said, Yeah, I've been working on them a long time, man. I mean, you know what they say. Power supply, power supply, power supply. So every time we find a game that we fix by messing with the power supply, we always think, Power supply, power supply, power supply. So it's kind of working. I wonder if it's working doing what it's supposed to do. Maybe we should try to coin it up. Sure looks like it's playing to me. 
Um, we'll get in touch with the owner and see how far he wants us to go. Does he want us to rebuild the monitor? I guess there's nothing really to do on the game board. I saw the edge connector was a little toasty, but it's still up and doing its thing. So uh, I don't know that I would rebuild that monitor. I mean, the thing looks pretty good. So I think the whole problem was the big blue was bad. Swapped in a new one. Uh, I should mention, too, whenever I pulled out the old one, and put in the new one, the old one was much lighter than the new one, which possibly because all of its uh, magic sauce had leaked out. It was about half the weight of the of the new one. So those things, they just dry up, and then the, the capacitance value of it drifts, and it starts letting AC through, and the AC on the board and the DC circuits is no bueno. Okay, so... Uh, Maybe we can coin it up and see if the thing plays. Okay, so I have thrown it in test mode, and that's kind of interesting. So this is what you get. It says ROM OK, RAM OK. Now the D under ROM OK means that the fourth dip switch is turned on. Switch D is turned on. And the trackballs work just fine. That's the X's, and that's the O's. Okay, so all of that seems fine. The only issue that we have is when I hit the button, can you hear what the sound is doing? It's making a bunch of, of uh, crowd noise that I believe is supposed to get louder each time you hit the button. It's supposed to intensify, they say, and it's not. Also, when you hit the button, it's supposed to make a beat, and it's not. So there's a little bit of audio issues going on. This one's the same. If you hit the coin switches, they're the same. Stop, 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 stop. I can't let this ignorance go on any longer. <laughs> I filmed that a few weeks ago. And at the time, I didn't know what was going on. But I eventually figured out that about everything I'm saying at the end of this video is completely wrong. So it's kind of, I'm going to leave it all in there because it's kind of funny uh, to watch, you know, kind of the thought process behind it and what I thought was true but was not true. So, for instance, the D that it said under ROM does not mean that the fourth dip switch is on. The third and the fourth dip switches aren't used. What it means is that it's the D setting, which is three minutes per coin, which means dip switches one and two are off, three and four are off. So it really means all the dip switches are off, right? So it's just that's a, just a minor thing. But the funny thing is, is that I think the sound is messed up, but the sound was not messed up. It was just I didn't know what I was doing, right? So let's. This is how you do the self test, right? Uh, so preliminary set volume level potentiometer located on a bracket immediately behind and to the right of the coin door to half volume. I didn't do that, but it didn't really matter. Okay, RAM and ROM test. Set the self-test slide switch uh, to the on position. If it's okay, the TV monitor displays uh, ROM OK, RAM OK as illustrated below. Blah, 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 right? So then it says, scroll field test. Press the play select push button switch on either control panel. So that's what I was doing. I was not doing the audio test. I was doing the scroll field test, right? So properly, uh, it would move back and forth. This means the RAM and ROM were checked and both tested correctly. Scroll field scrolls in the direction toward the player regardless of which play select switch was pressed, right? Okay. Trackball test. Roll the trackball in random motion and observe the TV monitor screen. So I was doing that right. Audio test. So it says, press each switch successively and hold it on. So that wasn't what I was doing. It says... Crowd sound intensifies as each switch is held on. So you're supposed to press the button and then press another button and it makes the crowd louder and then press another switch and it makes the crowd louder, right? So I didn't, I didn't know that, right? <laughs> right? So crowd sound does not intensify, indicates possibility that switch is bad, see next test, blah, 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 blah. So I screwed around this thing for about an hour and then I eventually figured out that I wasn't doing the test right, but by then I, hadn't, um, I had stopped filming it, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back and play the thing again. And so a lot of the stuff I'm saying is wrong, 
but I want you to just watch it and laugh along with me, okay? Okay, so I have thrown it in test mode, and that's kind of interesting. So this is what you get. It says ROM OK, RAM OK. Now the D under ROM OK means that the fourth dip switch is turned on. Switch D is turned on. And the trackballs work just fine. That's the X's. And that's the O's. Okay. So all of that seems fine. The only issue that we have is when I hit the button, can you hear what the sound is doing? It's making a bunch of, of uh, crowd noise that I believe is supposed to get louder each time you hit the button. It's supposed to intensify, they say, and it's not. Also, when you hit the button, it's supposed to make a beep, and it's not. So there's a little bit of audio issues going on. This one's the same. If you hit the coin switches, they're the same. Um, and I, I don't even know if the... I don't, I don't think the crowd noise is right. I think it's supposed to keep going up. Also, I haven't been able to get the... The LEDs ought to do their thing. That might be a problem, too. So you know what that means. We've got more work to do. We've come a long way, but we're not quite there. We're not quite there yet. Let me take it out of the test. See if I can coin it up. I am defense, it says. Well, I went too far, people. All right, so I'm supposed to be checking my... Okay, I checked my... We're going to do a... It would help if I knew what I was doing. Defense, select play. Down and out. One down to go. 25 yards to go. Oh, okay. So the offense is not selecting its play. That's what's going on. Delay of game. I guess I should... Alright, we're going for the bomb, people. Alright. And the crowd goes wild. All right, so it appears to be working, but the sound is screwed up. So guess what? I think we'll do another video on that because we'll be working on the board. So I hope you enjoyed it. We're about halfway home on it. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for how far we've gone so far. we got to figure out the audio, though. Or if the audio is wrong. Maybe it's not. I think it is, but <laughs> um, so I'll leave your comments below and we'll mess with it again next time. I guess if I figure out that the audio is fine, we'll, uh, we'll do some cosmetic stuff and just play it. Um, but uh, make sure to subscribe to us if you haven't subscribed already. And did you know we have a second channel? We have another channel. It's called My Brother Donnie, and it's all about the hijinks of My Brother Donnie. There's three of us. Me and Joe run the shop, and my brother Donnie... Uh, does a, a lot of uh, craziness all over the Carolinas that he's now filming. I'm over there on the channel with him right now. Uh, we're working on an old mobile home that we've bought that was tore all to heck and fixing it all up and getting it ready for rental. That's pretty cool. Pretty fun. So it has nothing to do with arcade games. So if that's all you're interested in, subscribe to us here. But if you're interested in 
happiness, subscribe to the other channel. Now, uh, you'll notice down below there is a link to Amazon. If you click that link, that's our Amazon link. And uh, basically anything you buy on Amazon, it gives us a little piece of Amazon's money. You don't have to sign up for anything. You just click the link and go buy whatever you were going to buy anyway. Uh, whether it's uh, toothbrushes or sports cars. And Amazon gives us a little bit of their money because we sent you there, right? Because you click the link. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Tons of people have been doing that. And thank you very much, people. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. I'm happy that we've got it this far. Now to mess with the sound. So we will see you on the next one. Have a good evening.